Well, for, for people buying machines, they will be able to buy Stage 5 machines from 2019 in most power classes, but 2020 uh, in the mid power size from 56 kilowatts to 130 kilowatts. But for the OEMs who are building machines, they, they're kind of in, in it now. Um, it's only two years away, and it takes longer than that to, to design a machine from scratch. So they're, they're very much speaking to us about it at the moment. Well, since, uh, since the beginning of the emissions journey in our industry, uh, there's been a, a real focus on reducing the particulate matter, so that's smoke or soot from engines, and also introducing uh, reducing NOx, which is the thing that causes smog. Um, and that's, in the last uh, what, 15, 20 years, that's reduced by, by about 95 to 98%, uh, depending on power class. Now, this next stage, stage five, won't be a much bigger step, it'll be a small step in both those pollutants, but in particular they're addressing the number of particles, so it's, the, it's not the, the amount, it's the, the mass of particles, it's the number. And that's going to drive um, the industry towards the use of uh, diesel particulate filters, really from everything from 19 kilowatts to uh, uh, 560. Uh, there is uh, different technologies, and there are some technologies which are, uh, are not sort of claimed as DPS, so there is a way of combining uh, two or three components. Uh, but in, uh, fundamentally, it is still a DPF, the same technology, uh, ceramic cord DPF is the only technology that's been proven to meet the levels of stage five. Um, and these, these um, there has been quite a lot of experience in places like Switzerland. Uh, of, uh, of, of particle number counts, which is what we're heading towards, and um, and even there, nobody's managed to meet those emissions without uh, 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 effectively a, a DPF. So, to be honest, we we're not worried about it. We've um, we've been using after treatment for a long time as a Perkins engine. Um, our our product range goes from uh, nine kilowatts right up to six hundred kilowatts now in variable speed engines, um, and we've, we've we've made a lot of engines here that, to meet these lower emissions. So we've done uh, over two hundred thousand uh, engines that meet uh, the you know, the current what we call low emissions stages, um, and we've got over four hundred million hours uh, with uh, DPS running in the field. So we, we're not worried about it, we, we just think it's another step in the journey. Um, the, the emissions journey has has consumed a lot of resources for the industry. For us as an engine manufacturer, obviously it has been our life for a long time. But uh, we do know that, um, uh, that as you add technology to engines, it does inevitably increase the cost. And people need to find a way of getting some value back for that. So. So yes, you are, the engines, you know, have been at, at the timing of our programs have been driven by um, the emissions timelines, but um, but each time we're trying to add value as well. So for example, we're trying to push up the the maximum power. So stage five engines will be more powerful than the stage four. Um, the, there'll be more torque. Um, maybe different shapes of curves. Maybe more responsiveness. Um, a lot of our customers are very focused on the machine integration, so how the engine works with the rest of the machine. Uh, and to be honest, there's um, more benefit in that, in machine integration, than there is in just working on one component on its own. I think uh, that uh, we have seen a number of uh, very small machines, uh, uh, really looking at successful niches, uh, particularly in the less than 20 kilowatts kind of space. So maybe for the machines that are used uh, in very close proximity to people, very al almost hand tools, um, and uh, I think that there is a, is a place for those in in certain markets. Um, whether we see them actually replacing diesel engines, bigger machines, I think that we are still a long way from that. And um, we have done some some work on on calculating that and looking at the, the future. Uh, the, pro the problem comes that when you get a, a typical construction machine, say for example a 100 kilowatt excavator and you know you look at how much power they consume during the day how much uh, you know 100 kilowatts maybe running a 30 percent duty cycle if they got their batteries from the cheapest place on the planet which is probably uh, Elon Musk's um, te Tesla factory 
uh, he is quite public about how much he charges for his batteries and um, the, the size of battery or the cost of battery would be absolutely phenomenal. We're talking around $70,000, so sort of, you know, it's in the sort of 50, 60,000 pounds. You can buy a lot of diesel engine for that and you can also buy uh, a lot of fuel, several years worth of fuel for that. You're just not going to see the difference in the, in, you're not going to see the payback. I'm not saying it won't come, I believe it will come, but I, I think that we're, we're probably in the 10, 15, 20 years. There is in the short term going to be a disparity, so the stage 5 is happening in Europe. Uh, there is no tier 5 in America, and uh, we wouldn't want to second guess when, when or if there will be one. Um, I think it's worth noting that uh, in America there are some regions who have their own ability to, to make um, emissions rules. So for example California or uh, New York, they may decide that, um, that, that they, need, they need to make local protection. So that will be interesting. Um, so, but, in, but in the short term, yes, there will be a, a different case. And, and that's, we're actually seeing that being a whole world trend. So people have been asking us, is the world going to come together on, on emissions? Well, no, absolutely not, it's going apart. So we still see places that are growing fast um, that have no emissions regulation, as in they're going through fast economic growth. Um, but but uh, we also see places that, um, that, are, that are like India and China, for example, that were very lightly regulated until recently, but China is going on a very rapid um, uh, path uh, to something approaching stage 3A, so tier 4 into it. And they'll be, the, they'll be going for their next emissions regulation in three years as well. Um, and their engines will look very similar to ours. You know, they'll have after treatment, common rail fuel systems. And so we'll see a whole range of engines from you know, very simple mechanical systems to stage five uh, throughout the world in the next five years. I think a lot of the, the, the diesel engine emissions are actually around more local and state level emissions. So particulates and, uh, and NOx are very much more about the, 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 the regional or uh, environment rather than global environment uh, so it's not about global warming this is about you know so so the, the clean air measures that we make in England will benefit uh, English citizens and uh, you know likewise for the whole UK likewise for Europe what we do in Europe will make clean air in Europe so we're not you know we're not playing playing for somebody else's clean air but I think that the the, um, the, uh, the thing that we we are we are, we are seeing uh, in our OEMs is that they are they are worried about this. They're worried that they they, they they want to be in different markets. Europe hasn't been the fastest growing market over the last few years, uh, and it's it's, it's it's yeah it's picking up. It's a bit patchy, but it's picking up. Um, and uh, and they want some access to other growth markets, uh, which have different emissions. And so we are designing uh, our <coughs> latest generation of engines. Uh, so that they have a, what we call a world capability. So that the same basic engine can be installed in a machine for China, a machine for Europe, a machine for America, a machine for, for Africa or the Middle East. Um, and obviously there will be differences in the after treatment, but most of the other aspects of the installation will be the same. So the way that the engine hydraulics works, or the engine electronics, the, the cooling systems and mounting, um, all of these things that takes a lot of engineering design time uh, will will be common for, for the whole world, and this means that uh, the engineering task is is is, is, uh, is easier. But it also means that uh, the OEMs can go into new markets at a, a lower cost. But it also gives um, a cost advantage to the customers of those OEMs because the OEMs can build. Um, machines with higher volume parts and they can start to see some, some, some value. So this world engine strategy is really, you know, how we, how we sort of, um, how we're trying to add some value uh, in giving the OEMs the choices they want.